I've got to say, young people like these, every one of them have these kinds of incredible uh, innovations. Uh, some of them are already fully operational, some of them are getting fine-tuned, but young people like these have to make you hopeful about the future of our country. And it's also a reminder for us, the adults, we've got to do our part. We've got to do everything we can to make sure that we are giving these young people opportunity to pursue their studies and, and uh, discover uh, new ways of doing things. And we've got to make sure that we're also leaving behind a world that is safer and cleaner and healthier than the one we find found. It. That's our obligation. So this is not the time to gut investments that keep our businesses on the cutting edge, that keep our economy humming, that improve uh, the quality of our lives. This is the time to, to reach a, a level of research and development that we haven't seen since the height of the space race. That's what we should be doing. That's what we should be focused on. Hey, my name is Brittany Wenger. I'm 18. I go to the Out of Door Academy and I'm a senior. When I was in seventh grade, I was taking this elective course on futuristic thinking. I became enthralled. I went home, I bought a coding book and decided that I was going to learn to code. In what? In what language? Uh, so I originally started with C-Sharp and I built these soccer playing programs because I'm an avid soccer player. But then uh, when I was in 10th grade, my cousin was actually diagnosed with breast cancer and I found out that she wasn't alone. One in eight women are inflicted with the disease. So I got really inspired to get involved and make a difference and try to improve the diagnostic process. So I created an artificial neural network. And these are programs that actually model the brain's neurons and their interconnections. So they can be coded to detect patterns that are far too complex for humans to detect. When you think about that, that means they really have infinite potential. So I applied them to the fine needle aspirate. Because the fine needle aspirate is the cheapest, the least invasive, and the quickest procedure a woman can have when getting diagnosed for breast cancer. Now, it's really a shame because a lot of doctors refuse to use them because they're currently very inconclusive. But using the program I created, they're actually 99% sensitive when it comes to malignancy. And this is huge because that's a number that could mean it's hospital ready. In addition, I deployed my program to the cloud because the cloud is just this incredible elastic entity that can scale to support usage by any hospital in the world. And I ran a series of 7.6 million tests, and I've proven that as I get more hospitals contributing breast samples, the success rate will go up while the inconclusive rate will decrease. So that's why I really want to have this cloud procedure so that I can support the acquisition of future data samples. So what's really exciting is I've actually, um, one, I've been able to work with hospitals to get more data samples and continue to see the breast cancer program improving, and I hope to get it into real hospitals. And then I've been able to extend a hybrid neural network to diagnose leukemia from genetic expression profiles. So yeah, no, it's exciting because it's diagnosing MLL leukemia, which is this very aggressive form of leukemia with a poor prognosis. Not only has it diagnosed all the MLL samples correctly, but it was able to recommend four different proteins that might be causing the samples to be so aggressive. So moving forward, these could be candidates for drug targeting. So that's kind of the direction I'm taking my research in as well. I hope to extend it to ovarian and lung cancer in the near future. Two days ago, I committed to Duke University. I have a full scholarship and a lot of support for research. I really love the campus, I love the people, so I'm really excited about going off to college in the fall. I hope to pursue both computer science and biology, and then eventually an MD-PhD to become a pediatric oncologist.